Hello, everyone, and welcome to a new episode of the Virtual Ninja Show. My name is Javier Soriano, and today we're going to be talking about attack disruption in Defender XDR. And for that, I have uh, my friend and expert on this topic, Christos. Hi, Christos. Uh, please introduce yourself. Hi, Javier. Hello. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Christos Venturis. I'm a peer of Javier's. We work in the same team in the OneSoc uh, Customer Experience Engineering team, which is part of the product group. Perfect. Thanks, Chris, and welcome. Uh, so the first question is is obvious, right? So can you tell us a bit about what is attack disruption in the Defender XDR platform? Yeah, so attack disruption is a functionality that we introduced uh, in XDR about uh, a year ago or so. Um, attack disruption is a set of automated response actions that we are aiming to quickly and effectively contain an attack while it is in progress. And this is based on a very high confidence of telemetry that we are collecting from our different defender set of uh, solutions. Got it. And what kind of scenarios are available in attack disruption today? Is any scenario there or some specific ones? Yeah, there is um, a number of scenarios that uh, we currently support. Now, one thing which is very important to note here is that each of these scenarios uh, consists of more than one detectors. So it's not that one scenario has one specific detection. There may, there may be more than one detections that comprise uh, the uh, the scenario in question. Thanks, Christo. So I have a question that probably uh, I share with the with the audience as well. Uh, we have in MDE a automated investigation and response. How is that different to attack disruption? Is it the same or not? Actually, this is a very very common question and. Several customers and partners are also asking for clarification um, about the specific uh, functionalities and the differences and similarities between them. Uh, so attack disruption and uh, auto IR, uh, they have a different goal and, and a different way of uh, of working. And if we look at the goal uh, of each feature, uh, disrupt is aimed to to protect. It's aimed to contain an attack while it is taking place. Uh, on the other side, uh, auto IR is more about shock efficiency. It is about automated remediation after an attack uh, has taken place. So it helps an analyst to investigate, do a basic triage, and it will also take some automated action when there is a uh, suspicious activity on, on entities. When it comes to action, uh, attack disruption is responding on on high SNR incidents. So when we create, when we develop a scenario for attack disruption, before we release it uh, to our customers, we make sure that it is a scenario that triggers with a very high signal to noise, which is more than 99.5% uh, accuracy. Um, so the entities uh, that are impacted, we we have high confidence that have been compromised and they need to be, and we need to take action against them. Um, also, attack disruption is based on scenarios, as we saw before, uh, whereas auto IR is triggering on any alert that uh, triggers uh, in a device in order to assist with triaging the alert. Uh, Auto IR is also focusing on singular alerts from telemetry coming from uh, MDE primarily. And attack disruption is uh, looking cross workload. So depending on the scenario, as we saw in the matrix, it is looking from telemetry across MDI, MDE, MDA, MDO uh, in order to take actions uh, and also trigger a, a detection on that scenario. So I think these are like mm. the main differences uh, between attack disruption and uh, auto IR. I think I think it's clear. So let's imagine I'm a, I'm a Defender customer and I want to make sure I can benefit from these features. What do I need to do? So first of all, uh, this feature works uh, on uh, on activated E5 licenses. Mm -hmm. And uh, you also need to have some configurations set up uh, per product, per Defender product mm -hmm. uh, in order for it to work. However, uh, Attack disruption does not have an on-off switch in the portal. So if you go to the settings, for example, uh, you will not find an attack disruption switch that says enable or disable. Attack disruption is enabled for all, all tenants that have an E5 license. And as I said, you need to make sure that your 
environment and each of the different workloads you, you have enabled is configured accordingly so that it will efficiently trigger uh, an attack deception scenario and also take a, a response action. Uh, we have recently updated our documentation and in an existing document that we had and we will be sharing uh, that uh, link to it here on your screen. Uh, how do I know? if my uh, environment has been impacted by uh, an attack disruption? Yeah, so I think for that, it's a, it's a good idea to go over a quick demo so that we demonstrate uh, all the different ways that you can explore an attack disruption incident and how to find details about it. Of course, of course, let's do it. The first thing that we can uh, observe when we have an attack disruption incident is that in the incident queue, there is a system tag which is automatically applied, which has a name of attack disruption. Uh, this is your indication that the incident uh, has been actioned by uh, the feature. You may uh, find situations where the attack disruption tag is not present right there in the tags because you, we cannot present multiple tags uh, in that page. Uh, however, if you filter by tag and you select uh, attack disruption, uh, you will see that you can select attack disruption and once you apply your filter, you will see all the incidents that uh, have that uh, tag with it. As I said, you might not see it right there on your screen, but if you have filtered for it, it's definitely an attack disruption incident. So let's say that we, we have uh, one of those incidents in our environment and we, look, we want to look at the details of it. So I have preloaded one of these incidents so that we don't spend more time for the page to load. Once we are in attack disruption incident, we'll, of course, see all the associated tags with it. Attack disruption will also be there, as you can see. You will also see entities that have been impacted by attack disruption. So in this scenario, we have uh, two users. One of those two users uh, has been disabled. Uh, so we have user linear here that has been disabled. Also whenever there has been a user disabled or a device has been contained or a user has been contained, there will be a yellow ribbon uh, at the top of the incident that will tell you that uh, attack disruption has taken uh, one or more response actions. One question here, Crystal, before you move forward. Can I exclude any entities from being affected by attack disruption? Like, for example, I, want, uh, I don't want my, I don't know, a VIP user to be impacted by an attack disruption scenario. Is that something I could do? So yes, it is possible to, to exclude actions, but it's also possible to undo actions. So let me walk you through that first. So if you go to the action center, uh, you can filter for uh, the action source. So if the action source uh, is filtered by attack disruption, you will see all the actions that were taken by the feature. So in our case, uh, we have the action that was taken against Lynn Robbins here. You will see that it was decided by attack disruption, so it was not a manual action by an analyst or, or anything. And you can also see from the status that it has been uh, completed. So once you click on any of the actions, you will get more details about it, like when it was submitted, uh, if uh, there are comments uh, either added by the analyst, in our case, attack disruption automatically populates uh, with some comments, and you can see the status of the user and the details of the user in, uh, in Active Directory or, uh, or Entra ID. Now, back to your question about uh, the ability to create exclusions. So if we go yep. to settings and then we go to identities, we can see there is a menu under actions and exclusions, which says global exclude identities. So this is where you can add uh, the user accounts that you do not wish mm. to be impacted by attack disruption in case um, you want to make sure that uh, a user will not be disabled by attack disruption. Yeah. Uh, one thing to remind everyone, though, is that once we take an action uh, against the device or against the user uh, or other entities in, in the future, uh, it comes out of a very highly uh, reliable source and analysis. So it is highly likely that this is not a false positive. So besides being able to exclude the specific identities or accounts from uh, being affected by attack disruption, can I also do this with uh, devices? 
for devices, the way that you can control uh, how you can uh, exclude devices is by managing the device uh, automation setting. Uh, so if you have a group of devices where you have set that group to have a, a, a manual automation or no automation at all uh, assigned to them, so attack disruption will not take automated actions against them. Got it, got it, got it. How can I get notified if a disruption event occurs in my environment? Is there an option to automatically get an email or something like that? Yes. If we go to system and then we go to settings and then we go to uh, Microsoft Defender XDR uh, submenu, uh, there is under general, you can see the email notifications. So the email notifications menu is not specific to attack disruption. So you can see that you can create email notifications when an incident is triggered or when a, threat, a new threat analytics post is created in the system. But if you look at the action tabs, this is where you can add notifications for actions that have been taken either automatically or manually in your environment. Uh, so for example, here, uh, we already have a created, um, generated uh, notification rule. Uh, we named it automated actions. Uh, it will send an email to uh, one of the recipients that we have uh, assigned here. And we can configure uh, what type of actions we want to uh, send notifications. So in our case, we want automated actions to um, to notify our our SOC here in that email, and we have configured uh, that once an automated action is taken on containing devices, containing users, uh, or disabling users, it will be sending. Uh, an email to uh, the gshop.alpineskihouse.co. So this is a way to uh, create notifications that will go to uh, to the email that you have designated. So Christos, in this attack specifically that you have in the screen, what made attack disruption disable the account of the user? What a specific event or chain of events uh, triggered that, that disabled? Right, good question. So what happened here is that we have a chain of events on, on a number of devices. So it started with a, a compromised device that started to navigate the network or started to understand the surroundings of uh, the network that it is standing currently. So once the device was compromised, it tried to identify other devices nearby in the same network and users that it could leverage to uh, move laterally uh, to other devices and uh, and also jump to other user accounts. What happened here and triggered that event is that the combination of tools that were used and the attempt to start encrypting uh, the network, so meaning the devices, meaning starting to uh, deploy the encryption payload uh, and also starting to uh, drop files associated with the ransomware attack. Uh, which we are uh, aware about from uh, our uh, security research. Uh, so the combination of, of these events gave us the confidence that this is a human-operated ransomware operation. And uh, this is why we took uh, action against the, uh, the accounts that we found to be compromised uh, during the attack. Got it, got it. So, so now that I see that uh, there has been an action taken uh, on the user, can I somehow undo the actions that have been taken by uh, attack disruption? Yes, this is possible uh, by jumping to the action center. So once you click to the action center here from the yellow ribbon that indicates that an action has been taken, end up to the list of the history of activities. Uh, once you click at the account that has been impacted by uh, attack disruption, you can click on the undo button here and the action will be uh, undone. Perfect, perfect, thanks. So Christos, so we, we saw this specific uh, chain of uh, events that caused the attack disruption uh, event, but wasn't also auto IR invoked in this case? Yes, Javier, actually uh, auto IR also was involved in the investigation of the incident automatically, of course. So if you look at the investigation tab, you will see that the last three uh, alerts had auto IR taking action to investigate. So you will see that uh, it took some time to investigate the device. Uh, however, it did not identify any threats 
uh, coming from the these alerts individually. And this is why attack disruption combined information and telemetry from all these different alerts that were combined to a single incident and then made the deduction that this is actually an attack. Uh, even though AutoIR did not find something individually, attack disruption identified uh, a whole chain of events and took action against the compromised entity. Awesome. Makes total sense. Awesome. Christos, last question. Uh, any updates, any coming soon, uh, things that are coming up in attack disruption? Yeah, of course. We recently made a couple of announcements in uh, in the recent RSA conference. Uh, we announced two additional actions that uh, we are taking, that attack disruption is taking uh, on triggered scenarios. Uh, one is disabling a user directly on Enter ID. Currently, uh, attack disruption is disabling the user from the Microsoft Defender uh, for Identity product, and then it syncs back to Enter ID. Uh, we are uh, now able to disable the user directly in Entra ID. Uh, and the other uh, action we announced is disabling an OAuth application, which is very common for uh, business email compromise uh, attacks or adversary in the middle attacks. Thank you so much, Christos, for coming to the show and showing us all these great uh, advancements in data disruption. And thank you, everyone, for watching the show. Mm -hmm.